as an uncle figuring out that you have someone in the legal system and like us entering into that and telling the DCFS we're interested in like having the permanence of our nephew be with us instead of someone in the system. And then after that, us getting licensed and like spending the time and resources to like learn more about our nephew and go visit him. The time and energy from like our kids having to like not have that time with us at times because we just needed to build a bond with our nephew. And from there, actually seeing the judge say, hey, nephew has been placed with you. Like I still have a picture to shortly thereafter being informed of like, hey, the foster family has a, a like, they, they've they entered the appeal process for this decision and being like, well, is that like a thing? And everyone's like, I guess it is now. And then from that to like going down another, almost like a year, but a little less than that of like, then we hear another decision of like, hey, they reversed the decision. So now you're not getting your nephew. Then to have to fight that to go, okay, hold on, we're not getting our nephew. We want to not give up on that. Is there anything else we could do to, you're talking about almost a two year journey to where like two weeks ago we found out, hey, he's going to stay with the Voss family. And so for us, I think the biggest thing that I would share is like the resources and then like the community around us to help us navigate this was so critical. And I feel really burdened for people who don't have the resources or don't have the community because you really need both. I think it's worth saying that when Vic says there's a community around us, like people within this church who have rallied, it's gonna make me cry, but have rallied around our family, who have paid for flights for us to visit, who have watched our kids while we visited, who've brought meals, who've prayed for us and prayed with us. And while we did not do this on our own, we will not continue to do this on our own. There's a lot of people that haven't even gotten to meet him yet who love our nephew and so we're thankful for that. I want every person that has a baby to feel like hey I can parent and I can do this and I have the support and the network around me to do so because look at this church that's right next door to me that wants me to parent my son or my daughter and to do it really well or if I'm struggling in my addiction like look at this church down the street that's willing to help me get clean. They're willing to take my children for me while I get clean. They're willing to help me do that. And then they're willing to help me get my kids back. Like the world needs foster parents. The world needs people who want to stand in the gap for families and love kids. And if the kids cannot go home, who are willing to step up and be their parents for their whole life. And the world also needs foster parents who are willing to step in the gap and love kids so well and get so attached. And if the kid has the opportunity to go back to their family, is willing to like break their own heart so that these kids get to be with their families. Jesus is kind and gentle and he loves the lambs. He doesn't ignore them and push them to the side, but he cares for them and not only for them, but the young parents. He cares for all of them and walks with them in life. And that's what we can be as redemption. We can be a reflection of Jesus, caring for the little ones and caring for the ones that are raising the little ones. Just like Molly and Vic said, they had so many families come around them and serve them in a very difficult time. And you Redemption Church have done that for so many families throughout this last 10 years. And it's exciting to think about all the opportunities that are coming in front of us to be able to serve even greater and serve more families and love on more people.